All right, we're gonna change out this motor. We're gonna put this motor in. We got a Spectrum brushless motor, uh, six kV, six thousand kV. It's a two-in-one motor, so you don't have to have a controller to go with it. All you have to have is a receiver. It can run straight off the receiver. This is a lot like the Dynamite motor. It just looks a lot better. And it's designed for the uh, drag, the low C drag car. That's based off the same uh, Mini. So the Mini, what is it, Mini No Prep car. This is the same motor in it. So the cable in it's a little bit longer than it is with the uh, Dynamite motor. So the stock motor is a brush motor made by Dynamite and had the ECS, everything was all combined. Right. So I had to pull this all out with the razor blade. I cleaned the plate up so we can mount the new one. So let's weigh this motor, see how much it is. Let me zero this out. So the stock motor setup is about 65 grams. The new motor setup is 74 grams. So it's quite a bit heavier. But this motor is going to have a lot more power. So the brush motors, when you're going to a lot of these tracks, they're actually a 10th scale track. So that little brush motor that it comes with, it is not strong enough to do a lot of the jumps. You actually need to have a brushless motor to be able to do a lot of the jumps and make it around the track. Um, this motor is plenty of power. People go with like the Castle Creations motors with the Micro Mamba. I think that's overkill for this car unless you are planning on doing some drag racing or high speed runs. Then you want to have the bigger Mamba motor. But the smaller one's good enough. Uh, you can do the Mamba, but it requires an extra controller. But this is both two and one. So you don't have to have the extra controller. It helps save on space and weight. Now I find myself turning my cars down, my minis that have a brushless motor, I find myself turning it down about 20 to 30% to be able to get around the track consistently. Because a lot of times it'll just overpower, try to wheelie, try to roll over if you don't turn the power down on it. I also got to go with this motor, the high load motor screws Part number 18026, and this is by 175rc.com. They are some good looking uh, washers and screws to go with it to help hold it in place. At these uh, washers are conical washers. So they're concave. I don't know if you can see it very well. There we go. So what this does is allows you to tighten the screw up and it spreads the force out on a larger surface to keep the motor from sliding around and loosening up. I don't put any Loctite on my motors. I, I just don't like it. it. It seems like it's a bad idea to me because if you mess up the threads on your motors, you got to get a new motor. And I don't like that. Uh, but other people do. I do put... Uh, Loctite on my grub screw for my pinion that goes on there. This has a two millimeter pinion and that's what the uh, Low C originally came with was a two millimeter pinion. Uh, I'm sticking with the original 18 tooth pinion Because I am running a larger spur gear. I don't want to run a bigger pinion yet. Maybe I'll go up with a, a 19 or something If you can focus in on that and see the number on there. Yeah, 
whatever. You can read it on the paper. Uh, I picked this up at my local hobby shop in Dallas at Gold Track up in uh, out there in Dallas. I think it was Grand Prairie area. Anyway, my phone is very blurry. Still having a hard time focusing. I don't know why. Oh well. So we'll continue on. I'm going to put this pinion on as the last thing, but right now we're going to line this motor up on this hot racing mount. So let's put this down so I don't make y'all do this. I'm sure I've already shook y'all around quite a bit. So I don't put Loctite on you. As often as you loosen your motor up to make adjustments, pinion and gear changes, it just doesn't seem like a smart idea. Look how good those look. Put some Loctite on this grub screw. Oops, wrong size, 10.5. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do is put this on here to set the depth. I can't go too deep because I'll start hitting the other screws. So that's about right. Somewhere in there. show you something. So this one here does have a flat side. Let's see if we can focus. Anyway on the shaft you have a flat side. That's the side that gets your grub screw going on it. Now you need to set your gap or your lash on the uh, between the pinion and the spur gear. The 
the way you do that is you slide a piece of paper in between the two, right? And then you push it together to make the mesh. And then you pull the paper out. Now you got your proper gap. So let's put this together real quick. Now just plug the motor back in just to do a little test run to make sure everything's working correctly. Everything's working. I haven't programmed anything yet, really. I just got it set up to run it and test it and make sure everything is working. Uh, so far, I'm happy. Later on, we'll go through on how to program the motor and then we'll program the controller separately. Well, it's looking pretty good. Look at that motor. Nice. If you uh, don't like my channel, please don't watch. But if you do and you like what I'm doing, please watch, like, and subscribe. Give me more feedback. I appreciate your uh, help on making my channel better. Thank you.